Question 1. A rectangular piece of paper was folded to form the figure below. What is the area of the unfolded paper? The trick to all folding questions, regardless is in geometry or in measurements, it is to unfold it. What do I mean? Hence, we need to have a bit of visualization skills. What do the shape look like when we unfold? Hence, it should look like this. Although it's not really drawn to scale, but you should get the idea. Hence, when I unfold, this segment will come down here. And what about for this segment? What happens if I unfold it? It should be something like this. represented by the dotted line. The next step were to be find out the dimensions of the dotted lines. Let's further partition it. To get this. From here, what can we do? Obviously, this must be 1cm because this segment, when you unfold it, it will come here. So this is 1cm, this must also be 1cm. Same thing for the other side, if this is 2cm, when we unfold it, it will appear here. So this is the 2cm. Next, what else can we see? We can see that the breadth of the rectangular piece of paper, this is the breadth, right, once you unfold it, so this 4cm will come down to here. And this is 4cm. And it's the same thing. This is 4cm. This must also be 4cm. What else? This 1cm will come down here to form 1cm. So are we done with everything here? Oh, still have this segment here. What is this? This is also the breadth, isn't it? Therefore, this must also be 4cm over here. Four cm. So do we have the length of the rectangular piece of paper? Yes, we have 2, 4, 10, 4, 1. Do we have the breadth? Yep, we do, which is this, 4cm. Therefore, the area of the unfolded paper is equal to the length, that would be 2 plus 4 plus 10 plus 4 plus 1 centimeter multiply by the breadth and that should give us 16 plus 4 20 21 21 times 4 the answer 84 cm square moving on question 2 the rectangle ABCD below is made up of two identical squares, here and here, and ten identical rectangles shown by the remaining shapes. Okay, The breadth of each rectangle is two-fifths of its length. The way to read this is the two units belongs to the breadth. The length will be... 5 units. Find the area of the unshaded part. Take note, they want the unshaded part. So let's start to analyze. For each rectangle, the breadth of its two units, the, the length is 5. So let's zoom in a bit to analyze this. Given that each breadth is two units, I'm just going to write 2 
to represent units. So this is 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. Okay, and this is 5. This is 5. What about this? This is also the breadth of a rectangle, isn't it? Therefore, this is 2, 2 units, 2 units, and 2 units, 5, 5. Where else? If this is 2 units, what about the length of the square? The length of the square must also be 2 units over here, 2 units over here, 5 units, 5 units. And we are done. Given that this is 12 units, 5 plus 2 plus 5, 12 units, it is equal to 60 cm. Therefore, 12 units is equal to 60 cm. 1 unit will be equal to 60 cm divided by 12 to give us 5 cm. From here, we should be able to figure out the actual length of one rectangle and also its breadth. From here, let's go straight to the area of one rectangle, which is, let's figure out the length of the rectangle. The length is 5 units, so 5 times 5 cm, length, we're going to multiply it by the breadth. The breadth is 2 units, 2 times 5 cm. That will give you 25 cm times 10 cm and 250 cm square. Finally, we can move on to find the area of the unshaded part, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six rectangles area of the unshaded part that will give you 250 cm square times 6 you should get 1500 cm square next Two identical right angle triangles are overlapped to form the figure below. AD equals to 14 cm here. DC equals to 4 cm here. And BC equals to 12 cm here. Find the area of the shaded parts. On first look, this question might seem impossible to find, especially you need to find this odd shape uh, trapezium, I presume, and you need to find this odd shape trapezium, which is not part of your syllabus. Hence, the only way you can find it is to actually have a deeper analysis. Now you think about it, the key thing they mention is that they are two identical right angle triangles. For the benefit of everyone, I'm just going to highlight this is the first triangle. And this is identical to this. And this is the crucial piece of information we need to utilize. First, we are going to break it up into three different segments. This shaded area is going to call A. The unshaded triangle is called B. And the last shaded part is going to call C. You think about it. The area of A plus the area of part B will form the first triangle, isn't it? What about the second triangle? It is formed by B plus C. Given that they mentioned there are two identical triangles, therefore A plus B must be equal to B plus C. Let me repeat. A plus B is equal to the area of B plus C because they share the common area here. What can we say about A and C? A must be equal to area C. Make sense? 
if you need pause and rewind the video again to listen to this segment okay about the explanation why area a is equal to area c given that a is equal to c we do not need to find them separately we just need to find out the area of a we're going to multiply it by two and that will give us the answer which is the area of all the shaded parts so let's begin Let's analyze. This shaded part is easier to find or this. This one, isn't it? How? We're going to break it up into a rectangle and a triangle. Can we find out the length of this rectangle? Yep. 4 times 12. Can we find out the area of this small triangle? We can. Half times the base, which is 4 centimeter. What about here? If this whole thing it's 14 and this is 12 we can say that this is 2 cm over here so let's start area of rectangle all right let me just write this shaded rectangle That is 12 cm times 4 cm. That will give you 48 cm square. Next, we're going to find out the area of this small little shaded triangle. Area of small shaded triangle. That will give you half times the base which is 4 times the height which is 2 cm that will give us 4 cm square next we can move on to the answer actually area of the shaded part as I mentioned previously we just need to first find out this entire area this entire area will just be 48 plus 4. Probably let me write it in. This is 48 and this will be 4. So we're going to take 48 cm square plus 4 cm square. After that, we are going to multiply it by 2 because this area is equal to this area. Hence, the answer will be 52 times 2, that will give you 104 cm square. Okay, next. Question 4. Nine identical rectangular boxes can be stacked into a cabinet 60 cm wide over here. Two arrangements are shown below. What is the height of the cabinet? This is what they are trying to find, all right? This is the height of the cabinet. There are two cabinets, uh, actually one, but they show you two different arrangements of the boxes. First arrangement, let's analyze again. Given that the boxes are packed nicely, all right, as shown here, are we able to deduce what is the breadth of one box, one rectangular box? We can write breadth of one rectangular box. That would be 60 cm divided by 3 to give us 20 centimeter. This is 20, 20, 20. Let's transfer this information over to this side. We also can write here as 20, 20, 20. As of this point, we can confidently say that this entire length here is made up of 8 plus 20 plus 20 plus 20 to give you 68 centimeters. Then from here, 
are we able to deduce the length of one rectangular box? We're just going to take 68 cm minus away the 12 cm here. After that, we divide it by 2. Hence, the second step. The length of one rectangular box. Again, it's 68 centimeter minus 12 cm to get this. After that, we're going to divide it by 2 to give us the answer of 28 centimeters. Given that this is 28, 28, 28, are we able to figure out the height of the cabinet? We can. Let's write height of the cabinet. 28 plus 28 plus 28 plus 12, which is 28 cm times 3. Then we plus 12 to give us the answer of 96 centimeters.